So, Marco, welcome again. And uh, uh, before starting, I would like to thank you again and again to having accepted so kindly to be a member of our uh, scientific committee. That will be great uh, in the interaction. It will be great in the workshop we are going to organize in June. And uh, yeah, I will not introduce you because everyone knows you. I'm looking at the list and everyone knows you already. You are so well known uh, worldwide, so it doesn't we, we don't uh, need to 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 say more about that. So I see that you are working now in uh, energy and we are doing plenty of things in energy at Lynx. So I guess we are going to have plenty of uh, nice uh, interactions in this specific topic as well. So Marco, the, the floor is yours. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, thank you for uh, inviting me in your scientific committee. I'm very honored to be part uh, of it uh, with uh, so many prominent scientists and uh, and uh, also uh, I, I've been interacting on and off with uh, Paris Telecom uh, since uh, many years. So. Uh, I'm, I'm really happy of this uh, of this appointment and uh, I'll do my best to contribute uh, for uh, whatever I can. And uh, so the presentation today, as you see, is uh, titled on the use of small solar panels and small batteries to reduce the carbon footprint of radio access networks. And uh, this is joint work with uh, Ana Paula Couto da Silva, who is from the University, uh, the Federal University of Minas Gerais in Brazil, uh, Daniela Renga and Michela Meo. Um, this was work uh, we started when Ana Paula was uh, visiting us for a few months. And uh, Michela, you surely know her, she, she, she has been working uh, uh, with me for decades now. Uh, Daniela is uh, um, a, a postdoc now in our department. She did, she did our PhD with us working on these, uh, these energy problems. And so before I start, let me remark that, uh, that uh, this work uh, uh, is a paper presented uh, at uh, MedComNet 2020. Uh, MedComNet uh, is the uh, new name for MedocNet. Um, and uh, this is a conference that uh, this is a conference series that uh, uh, has reached the 18th edition. This was started uh, by Mario Gerla that uh, you surely all, all know. And uh, last year uh, uh, we wanted uh, to go uh, to Arona for the conference. Arona is the birthplace of Mario and uh, we had agreed uh, with uh, his wife and daughters to meet uh, all together uh, in Arona. Quite unfortunately, this, uh, this was not possible. We had to, we had to go online, uh, but the conference uh, was uh, very successful. Uh, we had uh, uh, a large number of submissions and uh, many very good papers. Uh, if, if you're interested, uh, uh, all of the presentations are uh, online. There is a YouTube channel which is called MedComNet 2020. And uh, here you have uh, all of the papers and also the keynote speeches, uh, uh, very interesting keynote speeches by Isaac Rubin on uh, um, Auto autonomous driving, communication support for autonomous driving. Uh, another one by Tony Efremidis on uh, freshness uh, of information. And then uh, there is uh, uh, a, uh, I don't find it here, but uh, uh, there is one by uh, Don Tausley on, uh, on uh, um, quantum internet and one by Jim Crows on uh, uh, new paradigms in networking. So uh, you, you might be interested. Uh, you, have, uh, you have all of the recordings here. So in case, uh, in case you have some uh, time to spare or uh, some curiosity, uh, you are welcome to uh, take a look. And of course, you are invited to submit papers to the next edition. Uh, MedcomNet 2021, uh, which is uh, mid-June, actually 
the week uh, just before the meeting uh, of the committee in Paris. Uh, it's scheduled to be in Ibiza. Uh, I'm not sure whether we will be able to travel to Ibiza in June, but anyhow, uh, we already decided that uh, remote presentations are allowed. So uh, don't worry about traveling. Uh, please submit your papers and uh, uh, whatever. If, uh, if we will be out of this pandemic, uh, it will be a lot of fun to be together in Ibiza. If uh, as problems persist, uh, then uh, uh, we will be hybrid uh, or or fully online. Uh, we will decide that uh, uh, at the beginning of uh, of next year. So, having said that, let's get back to uh, our uh, talk, uh, to the presentation, and uh, uh, why why energy? Well. Um, if uh, if you are working uh, uh, on on energy on links, uh, you know very well the motivation. Uh, the energy consumption of uh, networks uh, and of uh, of ICT in general uh, is becoming uh, a big issue uh, because of uh, uh, exploding number of uh, um, terminals, uh, exploding number of equipment, uh, base stations in particular, the new architectures for uh, radio access network uh, uh, consider uh, uh, a, a strong increase in the, in the number of, uh, of base stations, uh, which means uh, a, a much uh, higher energy consumption. Um, in, in Italy, the incumbent telecom operator reported that, that uh, uh, at the beginning of the pandemic in the first month of the beginning of the pandemic uh, with everybody working online uh, traffic uh, the overall traffic over uh, over their network uh, increased uh, uh, about 50 percent and in particular the traffic uh, due to uh, conferencing uh, video conference increased by a factor six. So um, networks are really stressed. Uh, everything is uh, is growing. Uh, working online uh, increases uh, the, uh, uh, the the amount of energy which is necessary because we are uh, loading more and more base stations and uh, and equipment in general. And so here. Uh, what we are trying to do is to explore uh, the possibility to uh, power uh, cellular networks by using solar energy. Uh, why this? Well, you see, uh, we started working on the energy side of networking about, uh, uh, well, actually over 12 years ago. We published our first paper in 2008. And uh, then we have participated in some uh, uh, large uh, uh, projects, large international projects. Uh, you probably know about Green Touch, which is uh, a, a large project on, uh, on uh, reduction of the energy consumption of networking uh, started uh, by Alcatel Lucent at that time. Uh, we uh, were actually leading um, a network of excellence uh, of uh, uh, FP7, uh, which uh, was called Trend towards uh, uh, real energy efficient network design. And uh, uh, so the, the and several other projects were sponsored by the European Commission on uh, on uh, uh, energy reduction in in networking and in communications in general. But uh, in spite of all this research effort, uh, uh, we have seen that the energy consumptions have uh, kept increasing. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the only uh, significant uh, elements uh, that uh, led to uh, some reduction uh, were due to uh, new equipment introduced uh, by uh, manufacturers. Uh, which brought uh, uh, the energy consumption of base station from uh, uh, about uh, 3.5 kilowatts uh, 
to around uh, uh, 1 1.2 kilowatts in uh, in most uh, recent um, uh, in most recent um, uh, types of equipment um, and this is without counting uh, uh, cooling uh, and uh, and all the uh, ancillary uh, equipment that that you need around around the base station so at some point um, we started thinking well if we are not able uh, to reduce the energy consumption uh, because uh, after a decade of research uh, uh, we still see energy consumption going up uh, let's try to uh, tackle the problem by another angle so let's try to uh, change the type of energy that uh, that is consumed uh, uh, if, if we go from uh, uh, energy which is produced uh, uh, by burning fossil fuels to energy generated by renewable sources, then uh, uh, even uh, though uh, energy consumption goes up, uh, we can probably still achieve uh, uh, carbon emission reduction uh, by, by shifting energy and we considered solar because of the fact that uh, in some contexts uh, oh Jesus did I lose my connection no we still hear you hello oh, are you still there yeah yes oh, we are. Did, did you yeah. miss me at some point did you miss me at some point of everything was fine some because points, I had uh, 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 an announcement that my network was done. No, you are still connected, but the oh. quality degraded a little bit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. OK, so what I was saying is uh, uh, at some point we decided let's try to uh, change the uh, type of energy which we're consuming. Let's try, try to go to uh, renewable energy, solar energy, rather than uh, energy acquired from the grid, which is mostly uh, generated by uh, burning uh, fossil fuels. And the reason to go to solar was that uh, in several contexts, uh, especially in the areas which are not served uh, by the grid, uh, there were already uh, instances in which uh, base stations were uh, run uh, through uh, solar panels, uh, possibly complemented by diesel generators. The point is that uh, when you look at uh, the installations uh, in the remote areas where uh, the grid is not available, you see that in order to run a base station, you need quite a large uh, solar panel. Uh, which means uh, if you are in a mountain location, you probably have a lot of space, you can uh, afford uh, uh, setting up uh, a large solar panel. But uh, if you are uh, in, in a city area or if you are uh, uh, even in a rural area where the operator has a limited uh, uh, space in order to uh, position uh, their equipment, uh, then uh, large solar panels are a problem. So our idea was uh, uh, let's try and see what we can do with uh, small solar panels and small batteries. So uh, the idea was uh, let's see if the combination of a small solar panel and a small battery mm, uh, in addition to uh, a, a connection to the grid and uh, through uh, a uh, energy management unit uh, is capable of increasing the amount of green energy that uh, uh, is used to run a base station and at the same time reducing the uh, cost for the mobile network operator due to energy consumption. Because of course, if you are just uh, acquiring energy from the grid, uh, what happens is that you are paying uh, whatever uh, kilowatt hours you are consuming. Whereas if you are installing a solar panel, a battery, 
and uh, an energy management unit, you have uh, a capital expenditure in order to buy panel batteries uh, and uh, replace batteries whenever they die out uh, and maintain them and whatever, in addition to acquiring a lower amount of energy from the grid. So are we able to achieve a reasonable amount of uh, green energy while at the same time reducing the overall cost for the mobile network operator? And how do we uh, study uh, whether this is possible? Well, we use a Markov reward model to compute uh, uh, the uh, uh, operation of, uh, to, to study the operation of this uh, uh, energy uh, management system, uh, considering uh, what the base station needs to run and uh, uh, what uh, uh, a solar panel is able to generate. Mm -hmm. And uh, we explore several different uh, energy management uh, policies uh, that are uh, probably a first, uh, first attempt uh, to consider what could be done in, in such a setting. So the system that we consider is the following. You have a base station. Uh, the base station requires energy, uh, which is delivered to the base station through an energy management unit. And the energy a connection to the photovoltaic panel and a connection to an energy storage. And the energy storage receives inputs, uh, receives energy both from the photovoltaic panel and from uh, the power grid. Um, the uh, different policies that uh, we will look uh, uh, that we will consider uh, regard how you operate uh, these three elements and uh, what energy you uh, drain from these three sources in order to power the base station. So one macro base station, a base station power system. Uh, the base station is preferably powered by the solar energy, of course. Uh, if you can directly uh, bring uh, the energy uh, generated by the solar panel uh, to the base station, this is your best option. Otherwise, you are draining uh, whatever energy you have in the battery and your last resort is the power grid. Uh, and you draw from the power grid when uh, you do not have enough energy in the PV panel or uh, in, uh, in the battery. Uh, we uh, use a discrete time Markov reward chain, uh, separately studying different seasons because of course uh, the behavior of the solar panel is very different uh, in different seasons. Uh, this discrete time uh, uh, Markov reward chain has a state which is defined by three variables. Uh, first variable is a day type. We quantified uh, the type of day uh, in uh, five different levels. Uh, I'll get back to this explaining what I mean by day type and so on. Then the second variable is the time of the day where we are using a one hour granularity. And uh, uh, then we have an additional variable which is the radiance level which actually is a function of both the day type and the time of the day. Uh, why five uh, possible values for day type? Well, we studied uh, we took uh, the city of uh, Torino as, uh, as an example uh, because of chauvinism, of course, <laughs> but uh, we, we looked at what happens. Uh, there, are, there are public databases of solar irradiance uh, and uh, we looked uh, at what are the average curves uh, over different uh, seasons and what types of curves uh, you obtain for uh, irradiance uh, during a day. And you have a significant dispersion for every season. Uh, we decided to group uh, uh, the different possible patterns in five uh, uh, classes, which we call day type one, two, three, four, five. Uh, 
the day type one is the worst uh, and the day type five is the best in terms uh, of amount of irradiance. Uh, and you see that the differences between summer and winter are remarkable, uh, both because uh, um, both because of reduced uh, number of uh, uh, hours of production from the panel. Whereas in summer you go uh, from uh, even before six uh, to uh, eight eight p.m. Uh, or or even nine. In winter, uh, you barely have any production before seven uh, and uh, uh, after after six p.m. Um, these uh, uh, data um, are used. Uh, I'll show you. I'll show you later to uh, both uh, characterize uh, how much energy is produced and uh, what are the transitions from one day type uh, to another. And of course, uh, once you have the date type, uh, you are following one of these curves. Uh, so this curve tells you what is the production at a given time uh, for uh, a given date type uh, uh, along the day. Uh, the battery charge level is uh, uh, the reward. It is modeled as a continuous uh, uh, random variable and uh, it is uh, uh, accounting for the energy which is accumulated within, uh, within the battery. So uh, at every uh, state, uh, you compute a reward uh, which is uh, uh, obtained like this, uh, the amount of energy produced uh, by the solar panel uh, minus uh, the amount of energy which is consumed uh, by the base station and uh, uh, plus uh, the amount of energy which is bought, uh, which is acquired uh, from the power grid uh, if uh, uh, your uh, uh, policy of energy management uh, uh, dictates that uh, in this time slot, uh, in this hour, you should buy energy from uh, from the power grid. Uh, energy production, as I said, depends on the day type variable, on the time of the day and on the irradiance level. Mm -hmm. uh, we used uh, real data uh, from uh, uh, one uh, long term data set which covers 20 years. And uh, you use this first data set in order to compute the transition probabilities uh, among date types uh, in each season. Mm -hmm. So uh, given that we are in summer, this uh, data set allows us to compute what is the probability that uh, uh, a date type four is followed by a date type five. Mm -hmm. Uh, we, we, we can compute, we can estimate these probabilities uh, uh, in order to match uh, what are the observations along uh, 20 years. And then a short term, uh, which covers only two years data set, uh, is used to compute the uh, average uh, irradiance values in every hour. Mm -hmm. And uh, here you have the websites that we used. This is uh, uh, the first one. The long term is the SODA uh, website. Uh, and the second one is uh, uh, a website which is managed by NASA and uh, uh, Ecole de Min. Uh, <coughs> and this uh, information about uh, the intraday variability. So the variability of irradiance uh, from uh, one hour to the next uh, given uh, the day type. And from this uh, you can get uh, uh, histograms uh, of uh, irradiation, uh, which of course are quite different uh, uh, in summer and uh, in winter. And you see here uh, uh, you have uh, for the five different day types, the histograms uh, uh, relative to summer and the histograms uh, relative to winter. And uh, you, you, you see that, uh, uh, well, for day type five uh, in, uh, in, uh, in summer, you can get uh, to over 1000 uh, watts per meters. Whereas uh, in winter for day type five, uh, you get uh, between six uh, and 700 at most. Uh, but uh, you can also have with high probability 
uh, uh, very low production. Uh, day type one, which is the worst day type, uh, 80% uh, you, you have only uh, between zero and 100 uh, watts per square meter. OK, this is for the energy generation. What about energy consumption? Well, energy consumption uh, uh, depends uh, on uh, uh, what is the traffic load of the base station. And, uh, and for this, uh, uh, we needed uh, both a model of uh, uh, how the energy consumption depends on traffic load and the data on the uh, uh, daily behavior of traffic. So as regards the model, we used uh, uh, the one uh, produced uh, within the uh, FT7 project Earth, which was uh, uh, probably the first uh, large FT7 project uh, looking into energy consumption of networking. And uh, for traffic, we um, obtained uh, uh, traffic load curves from uh, an Italian uh, mobile network operator. And uh, uh, here you have uh, patterns of uh, traffic load uh, for uh, a base station in a residential area and in a business area. In red, you have the business area. In blue, you have the residential area. Uh, the uh, continuous line is uh, a weekday and uh, the uh, dashed line is a weekend day. And you see that for a business area, as you expect uh, during the weekend, the traffic is, uh, is very low. Is this uh, uh, sequence of red dots uh, uh, down here. Whereas uh, during, uh, during a normal business day, you see traffic uh, going up starting 8 o'clock in the morning. Uh, then you have uh, a dip uh, at lunchtime, uh, then a second peak uh, in the early afternoon, and then the traffic is declining and, uh, and going uh, to low levels after, after 8 p.m. Uh, for uh, a residential area, the situation is different, uh, remarkably different, and you see that uh, especially during, uh, uh, during weekdays, uh, uh, peaks are uh, late, uh, rather late in the evening, so after dinner, uh, after dinner you, get, uh, you get a traffic peak. Uh, a little bit less pronounced is uh, the peaks the peak during weekends, uh, but, uh, but still uh, the amount of traffic is uh, mostly shifted in, uh, in the second part of the day. Uh, we, we did the computations for the different types of, uh, of traffic, so it's for, for, for these four curves, uh, but uh, um, you can uh, probably easily understand that uh, uh, the business area is uh, less demanding. Uh, why is less demanding? Well, of course, the business area during weekends is less demanding because you have very low traffic, so energy consumption is low. But also, uh, also during weekdays, uh, the business area based station is less critical because uh, you have a strong correlation uh, between uh, the uh, traffic peaks and the peaks of energy generation. So uh, you can, uh, you can uh, uh, intuitively understand that uh, uh, if you have traffic peak exactly when your uh, solar panel is generating most of the energy, then uh, it's easier to match uh, energy requirements with energy production. Uh, the most critical case is uh, the residential area where uh, you need uh, the peak of your uh, energy in periods when your solar panel is uh, uh, practically giving you no, uh, uh, no output. Then uh, uh, energy management policies, we considered uh, uh, three plus one cases. Uh, the first case is uh, uh, what we call only battery policy. With the only battery policy, uh, you only use uh, 
uh, the energy from the solar panel or uh, from the battery until uh, you are out of energy and you are from the grid uh, when uh, you cannot do anything else. You need to uh, still run your base station, but uh, uh, the panel is not producing and uh, the battery is empty. <clears throat> so this is the, the first case. Second case is, well, uh, um, let's, uh, let's try to save some of the green energy in the battery uh, by not uh, uh, consuming uh, uh, green energy at night because at night uh, traffic is uh, uh, low and uh, uh, typically energy is uh, less expensive. Mm. So from midnight to 6 a.m. we use uh, uh, energy taken from a grid and we take energy from the grid in a quantity which is exactly equal to what is necessary to run the base station. We, we don't uh, store energy from uh, um, into the battery, but we also do not drain energy from the battery at night. And the third and fourth uh, uh, options that we considered is, well, uh, let's do something more at night. Uh, let's not only uh, power the base station, but let's also exploit the fact that the energy cost is lower at night and let's also uh, recharge the battery. And in this case, uh, we acquire from the grid uh, in, in the night period, which is defined as midnight to 6 a.m., uh, in a quantity which is equal to what is necessary to run the base station, plus, and here are the two cases, either uh, 0.5 kilowatt hours per hour or one kilowatt hour per hour. And this is used to recharge the battery. Of course, uh, only up to the battery capacity. Uh, what uh, we uh, compute with, uh, with our model? Well, we compute the uh, amount of energy purchased from the power grid. Uh, we uh, compute the cost of the energy purchased from the power grid. Uh, we add it up to have the uh, total uh, energy purchased over the year. Remember that our models are uh, uh, different uh, for different seasons. So we have four different models, uh, uh, winter, spring, summer and autumn. So we, we put together the results of these uh, four models to obtain the uh, energy cost over the year. Uh, we compute uh, the OPEX and CAPEX over one year, accounting for uh, the cost of uh, uh, installing the solar panel, uh, buying the batteries, uh, uh, replacing the batteries when, uh, uh, when they are exhausted, uh, purchasing uh, energy from the grid, and uh, uh, we uh, compute in this manner the total cost uh, to uh, power the base station. And finally, we also compute the green to brown energy ratio. Uh, that is, uh, we compute the fraction of uh, green energy which uh, we are able to use to run the, ba with the base station. So, uh, of course, the total energy is uh, the sum of the green energy plus the brown energy, and uh, we compute the ratio green over green plus brown. Uh, as uh, I told you before, we look at the residential weekday traffic profile, which is the most critical. We account for the fact that when you uh, put uh, uh, energy in the battery or you drain energy from the battery, you have losses. So we account for 15% uh, charge and discharge losses at the battery input and output. We consider, as I said, uh, small panels, uh, one, two and five kilowatt peaks. Uh, roughly uh, the, mm, uh, the efficiency of solar panels is uh, 
around 20, 22 percent. We, we consider 20, so you should account for the fact that uh, one kilowatt peak means uh, five square meters and uh, and uh, and, uh, and progressively two means 10 and five means 25, which corresponds uh, to an efficiency of, of 20 percent or of 22% plus uh, plus some um, inefficiency. And we look at small batteries, uh, which means uh, one, two and five uh, kilowatt hour uh, of uh, uh, energy storage capacity, which is equivalent to one or two uh, batteries uh, uh, like, like the one we use in cars. So uh, limited cost but also uh, limited duration in the sense that uh, these batteries have a limited number of uh, charge discharge cycles uh, and so you have to account for replacement whereas panels uh, solar panels uh, have a lifetime of uh, somewhere between 10 and 20 years uh, batteries uh, only allow you to have uh, uh, a few thousands uh, five, ten thousand uh, uh, charge discharge cycles. And by putting all of this together, we get these uh, results. Mm. Uh, this one is small, but this is small because I have to show you many more of these. Uh, this is the only battery case uh, with uh, one kilowatt hour uh, energy storage. And you have here one, two and five kilowatt peaks uh, this is the size of the uh, solar panel. And you have these bars. This bar, the first bar is uh, how much grid energy you consume. Mm? And this, uh, uh, sorry, this red bar is how much, uh, uh, how much grid energy you consume. And this refers to, uh, to the uh, vertical axis on the left. Uh, the other, uh, the orange is the capex of uh, the um, photovoltaic panel. The yellow that here you barely see because the battery is very small is the cost of batteries. The uh, dark blue is the cost of energy that you acquire from the grid. So this blue is proportional to this red. The conversion factor is the cost per kilowatt hour. And uh, the light blue here is the uh, total cost adding up uh, the three components that I mentioned. So uh, the PV capex, uh, the uh, battery capex and uh, the energy cost. Um, the dashed line, the light blue dashed line here is uh, the, uh, the um, cost that you would have by uh, running your base station entirely from the grid. So the game we are playing is we need to look for these light blue bars that uh, stay uh, either very close or lower than the uh, dashed uh, blue line because our objective is to tell the mobile network operator, look, our approach is able uh, to save you money or at least uh, to uh, uh, equal the amount of money that you are spending uh, to power uh, your base station. And then we repeat this for larger batteries, two kilowatt hour, five kilowatt hours. Uh, and, uh, and you see that here uh, the costs change and in particular the cost of batteries, which is these, uh, these uh, yellow bars, these yellow bars become more significant because if you need more batteries, then the cost of the battery goes up. But unfortunately, also, also the uh, light blue bars go up uh, because, uh, because the, the total cost goes up. Well, of course, if you have larger batteries, uh, you are better off. So if you have larger batteries, uh, you can reduce the cost of the energy which is purchased from the grid. And we do this for the four uh, different policies that we have consumed. Uh, so the only battery is the column here on the left. Night consumption is the second column. Uh, then uh, the recharge of 0.5 kilowatt hours per hour and one kilowatt hour per hour. Marco. Yes. 
Uh, there is a mix of uh, your capex and opex in this cost. You you are dividing the cost of uh, acquiring the battery and the panel through how many years? Ten years. This uh, all of this is done over ten years. Okay. Which is considered as a reasonable lifetime for uh, uh, for um, uh, for a PV panel. Definitely. So the cost of the PV panel is account accounted only once. The cost of the batteries is accounted uh, considering how many uh, charge discharge cycles. And uh, when you reach uh, the maximum allowed number of discharge cycles, uh, then uh, you need a battery replacement. So all of this is considered over a 10 year period, uh, including uh, once the cost of the panel, a variable number of times the cost of the batteries because you need replacements and uh, you take the yearly amount of uh, uh, energy from the grid, multiply that by 10 because of course that is repeated 10 times over the 10 years. And regarding the energy, you are supposing a, a flat pricing? No. Because, because if you had a lower price at night, uh, this will impact the benefit of the last option, right? Yes, of course. We are accounting for the variations of the cost uh, over the day, uh, which, however, uh, is, is not so large. Mm. Uh, but we are taking that into consideration. Yeah, I, I don't have it here the curves that we used, but we, we took uh, uh, we took curves uh, which uh, represent the average uh, uh, energy cost at different times. Uh, again, for Italy, because we are doing this uh, considering uh, considering the city of Torino as, as a location. But we are accounting for the fact that the energy cost at night is lower than uh, than in the middle of the day. Thanks. OK, so uh, what you see at this point is that some of these light blue bars uh, uh, exceed the uh, dashed horizontal line, uh, which uh, means uh, you should go to your uh, network operator and tell him, uh, look, uh, all of this is very nice, but it's going to cost you more. Mm -hmm. So uh, he will not buy this. And interestingly, um, this uh, this is true in in variable places. Not only for uh, is not only for uh, uh, the largest PV panel. Also here you see here what happens is that uh, <coughs> panel is very is very small. So the cost uh, the cost of the panel uh, is uh, is small. But uh, uh, but what happens is uh, that uh, you need uh, more batteries. Uh, uh, you need uh, to acquire more energy. So the trade off um, is is interesting. It's not uh, is not purely monotonic in the PV panel or or the battery. But what we see is that uh, the uh, cases which uh, uh, I marked as green, which are the ones uh, where uh, uh, the uh, light blue bar does not exceed uh, the, the threshold that we want to expect, are uh, mostly for the only battery case. Mm. Uh, we can exclude uh, the uh, option of recharging during night because this uh, uh, barely uh, satisfies the constraint, so it's uh, uh, a, a risky business going going in that direction, and uh, uh, so we concentrated on uh, on the only battery case, uh, or or if you wish also on uh, on the night consumption. But if you look at the green to brown ratio, <laughs> and here you have the, on, the the green to brown ratio for the four cases that we considered, uh, the green to brown ratio. Uh, is highest uh, for the uh, for the only battery case, uh, and you see in particular that uh, if you take the only battery case uh, with uh, uh, PV panels of uh, two kilowatt hours, uh, which is uh, which is the results here, the results uh, uh, of the three uh, small pictures in in the left column. Uh, but the ones at the center here where you have uh, two. Do you see my pointer? Yes. yes. OK, so uh, these these results here with uh, 
two kilowatt peak, which are the ones that appear to be consist consistently uh, allowing you not to uh, go above the, uh, the threshold. Uh, in this case, what happens is that uh, the ratio between uh, uh, green and brown energy is uh, uh, close to one. It's a little less than one if you use one kilowatt hour. It's very close to one if you use two kilowatt hour battery and uh, it's uh, it's uh, larger than one if uh, if you use a, uh, a uh, five kilowatt hour, uh, five kilowatt hour battery. Mm -hmm. Which means that, uh, uh, and this was our conclusion, which means that by using uh, small panels uh, mm, uh, and uh, our uh, uh, indication was uh, around uh, two kilowatt peak and uh, small batteries, which means uh, uh, two or five kilowatt hour batteries, which means uh, uh, two uh, car batteries, uh, you can uh, uh, guarantee that 50% uh, of uh, the energy you use to run your base station is uh, produced by the solar panel. So uh, the ratio between uh, the, um, uh, the green and brown energy, um, the green and the total energy is, is around 50% or, or green to brown is uh, uh, in the proximity of one. Which, uh, which is interesting because this is telling you that uh, uh, with uh, about 10 square meters of solar panels and one or two car batteries, uh, you can, uh, you can uh, reduce the carbon footprint of, uh, of your base station by around 50 percent and uh, uh, we hope that uh, uh, being able to uh, respect the constraint uh, that uh, that uh, uh, the total cost is uh, not higher than uh, uh, what you obtain by uh, powering the base station with um, uh, directly with the grid uh, can be interesting for the uh, mobile network operators. And that's uh, the conclusion of what I wanted to tell you. And of course, I'll be happy to uh, receive your questions. OK, th thank you, Marco, uh, for, for your presentation. So any question in the audience? Yes, Marceau? Uh, yes, so. Uh... Thank you very much for the presentation. It is very nice. Um, I, I like the fact that you 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 have taken uh, you have tried to take uh, very realistic models because uh, I remarked that in this domain uh, the models are uh, can really influence the the conclusions and uh, it's important not just to have a nice algorithm and so on, but to to know exactly how much uh, energy we can save and so on. Um, so, but I have a, a first question uh, and then I can leave the floor maybe to, uh, to someone else uh, on the generic motivation, because you say that you want to reduce the carbon footprint, uh, but at the end you speak about uh, energy. So it's a bit uh, different in the sense that uh, the mix of energy uh, is, is important. Another uh, related question is the fact that uh, if you really want to take into account everything, maybe uh, you should think about the fact that the green energy is not so green because uh, to, uh, as far as I know, for the production of batteries, uh, you need to extract some materials. So I don't know. Then the, uh, they have a finite life, as you said, so you have to, uh, I mean, they, they will uh, impact also the environment. Uh, the production of the solar panel uh, is costly in energy. Uh, probably it will be uh, produced in China, so you have to take it uh, to Torino and so on. So it costs also some energy. And so I wanted to, to know if you if you have thought about this kind of questions to, to have a very holistic view of, uh, of the problem. Uh, yes, I, I totally agree uh, with you. Uh, the, the, we should uh, implement a complete life cycle analysis of uh, uh, of uh, of the of the process. Uh, 
this uh, this is what uh, we, we are in contact with the the energy people in in Polytechnico, and they they are they are preaching about life cycle analysis. The problem is that uh, uh, then when you ask them for data, uh, okay, let's account for the entire life cycle, but it seems to be uh, uh, extremely difficult. So everybody is uh, is saying uh, uh, you cannot only account for uh, for how much energy you consume and so on. And by the way, another thing we don't account for is that uh, our assumption is that all of the energy that you acquire from the grid uh, is brown energy, which today is not true anymore. Uh, some of the some of the uh, energy providers uh, are uh, are telling us how, how green they are and what is the fraction of green energy they are able to deliver to you and so on. So also also the fact that uh, the energy that you acquire from the grid is 100% uh, brown is not true. Uh, I, I agree. I agree. We we are not yet there. Uh, that is um, that is uh, not easy to do. Uh, it would be extremely nice uh, to be able to account for production uh, for uh, for disposal uh, of, uh, of solar panels, of batteries, and everything. But uh, we we are not yet there. We we tried to interact with. Uh, uh, with the people in our energy department uh, who tell us oh yes yes but uh, but then uh, but then they are not able to give you numbers that you can plug into models so uh, we would very much like to do that but we don't know how to do it thank you François? Uh, yes uh, thanks for the very nice lecture uh, I had a question on the, uh, if you think of, uh, um, I mean, um, a structure with um, uh, multi-tier uh, architecture, so think of 5G with uh, um, um, macro-based station working in a, a centimeter uh, waves and um, having, in addition, millimeter waves, small cells and the network, local network of uh, various types of uh, of uh, radio access uh, uh, technology. So, if you have uh, d different types of base station, uh, could you have uh, different types of equipment for this um, uh, solar or batteries, depending on the depending on the type? And could you locally uh, uh, mutualize uh, perhaps this? Uh, you could think of uh, if if you have a, a, a macro cell with a certain number of uh, Femto, uh, you, you could, uh, if one has spent or uh, more energy, it could borrow some from the uh, from the solar panels in nearby or things like that. I mean, is there a net networking dimension to the problem if you move to multi-tier architectures? Uh, yes, yes, there is. Um, we have looked uh, at cases uh, in which you have one macro base station and uh, several uh, uh, small cell base stations. We did not uh, uh, do this same work on that context. Uh, what we tried to do uh, in, in that context is to understand uh, uh, when you can uh, uh, switch off uh, uh, some of the uh, small cell base stations because you really you don't really need their capacity uh, typically you you want uh, a small cell base stations uh, to to increase the capacity in a given area but uh, you in, you need this capacity only for some time intervals you don't need them uh, 24 7 uh, so you might consider uh, uh, switching uh, small cell base stations on and off and uh, uh, and in this case, uh, uh, we we did some different studies, which uh, uh, which uh, are interesting because they give you they give you a, a heterogeneous network flavor. And uh, and uh, this is um, a, a first answer to a part of your question. The second uh, part of your question, which was also extremely interesting, is there a networking dimension? Uh, yes, there is a networking dimension in the sense that uh, if you 
consider the possibility of sharing power uh, in the sense that you have, uh, let's say, a, a larger solar plant that uh, can be used to power different base stations uh, in proximity of each other. And uh, uh, this, uh, this uh, solar plant uh, can be uh, exploited uh, with, uh, with different needs uh, according to the different needs of the base station. Then you can implement uh, interesting algorithms uh, and you can even try to optimize uh, uh, which base stations uh, you are uh, exploiting, uh, how you are associating users uh, uh, to base stations. Uh, according not only to available capacity, but also to available energy. So there is definitely uh, a networking dimension uh, to the to the issue. Um, uh, some things uh, have been done, but uh, but there is still uh, still a lot of work to do. Mm. I have uh, one Thank comment you. and one question. Uh, sorry, uh, did you finish your answer, uh, Marco? Yes. I have uh, one comment and one question uh, coming from the comment. Uh, I remember I remember a project. It was the time of Alcatel Louis Saint. Uh, it was before I think Green Touch that you mentioned at the beginning. Uh, it was a, a, a program about uh, using alternative energy for the base station. Uh, and I remember we have uh, in uh, in our location in uh, south of Paris an antenna. Uh, who was uh, fueled uh, by energy coming from the sun, the solar panel, but also the wind. Uh, and uh, the goal here was really to uh, to get rid of uh, the um, the electrical supply from external. Uh, for, for some region in the, the world, uh, you do not have access to to, to the energy, and so it was really useful to to rely on uh, because. When you do not have uh, sun, you may have wind, and you have also energies uh, from the batteries uh, for the night and so on. Uh, and uh, it may help in reducing more the amount of energy you need from the grid, the brown, what you call the brown energy. Uh, do you plan to? Do you think about this kind of solution where you have more alternative energy on your base station that you can use? Uh, so yeah, yes, I, I know that uh, Orange uh, uh, probably using uh, uh, the the equipment of uh, Alcatel Lucent uh, at some point was extremely active in uh, deploying uh, um, base stations uh, uh, completely off grid, uh, uh, especially in uh, especially in Africa where uh, mm -hmm. where they did not have access to uh, to not not at all, or they had access to a quite unreliable uh, unreliable power grid so they wanted uh, and uh, yes we we did some studies on this uh, um, the point is uh, you need uh, um, fairly large solar panels so uh, this is something that uh, can be useful or uh, attractive for for operators uh, uh, but um, but uh, in in corner cases uh, so it, it can be a solution. Um, actually, there, there are uh, there are many many works in the literature that report uh, these things. Uh, I just a few days ago I, I was looking at uh, at a paper reporting about uh, uh, base stations in the mountains of Afghanistan, which are exactly powered as you said uh, with uh, with a mixture of solar and wind. Uh, but these uh, are mostly corner cases. The point is that uh, if, if you want to make this uh, available uh, in uh, for for uh, large numbers of base stations, you must find solutions that are deployable uh, also in densely populated areas. And in densely populated areas, uh, uh, deploying uh, several hundred square meters of solar panels uh, uh, for each base station is probably not doable. Uh, and you you need uh, you need to have access to a, a large uh, flat roof uh, uh, which uh, which is not always the case and uh, and then you have to rent a large area and for operators this is uh, this is probably not interesting in uh, in densely populated areas so the the, the 
overall answer is yes we looked at that but uh, it seems uh, it seems to be doable uh, in 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 special cases not uh, not uh, for uh, a majority of the base stations that we have okay thanks marceau uh, see you have another question yes i have i have uh, some other questions um uh, my first question is about the optimal policy because you have uh, you have investigated fixed uh, policies which are quite natural uh, as, as benchmark at least. But have you investigated uh, optimal? Is it possible to investigate uh, optimal policies? This is my first question. Uh, second question is about is more practical. Is uh, so Earth model uh, is used a little bit uh, everywhere for the BS consumption. But uh, now it, it has uh, almost 10 years. So do you think it's uh, it's still valid or do you are, are you aware of uh, something more recent? And uh, and and my my last comment is, is more uh, maybe a suggestion because it, it seems that uh, you, you you put a very red cross, a big red cross uh, on, on the right side of your of your slide at some moment uh, because of the cost. Uh, the cost uh, because the cost was too high but maybe the cost may should not be the main parameter these days maybe the the the, the amount of brown energy we are using uh, should be put forward so i suggest not to put a so big uh, red cross on this even if it's not uh, uh, something i i can understand i mean the the, the reasoning behind but uh, well you understand you know, I totally agree with you. I the, the the Red Cross is because of my dissatisfaction with the attitude of the operators. That uh, well, you see, in this period, uh, life is very difficult for them. They they are facing uh, uh, lower returns. They need a lot of investments for 5G and so on. Whenever you tell them to do something which implies higher cost, they hate you. So uh, I totally share your point of view, and uh, I I am very frustrated by the fact that it's uh, very difficult to convince uh, the the operators to to do something for a motivation which is uh, which is different uh, from uh, uh, from economics. Uh, Regard and in fact, we we did study many of those things. The, this work I was reporting it comes exactly out of the frustration uh, due to the fact that uh, the operators are never considering any option uh, which uh, which might imply a, a significant uh, overall benefit uh, at uh, a small additional cost for them. Uh, then I remember your first question, is there an optimal policy? Uh, I believe yes. Uh, I was trying to convince uh, my uh, uh, colleagues to uh, look uh, for that, uh, but uh, they were complaining it's too difficult. So uh, right now uh, we are not moving in, in that direction, but, uh, but I think it's a very, very interesting question. I have a publication on this. I can send you. I oh mean, yeah, ah, it's not wonderful. Also, yes, it's please. Not uh, very so detailed as your models, but uh, at least uh, the optimality is uh, is considered. Yes, I, I think this is a very interesting question. So, uh, if you have something, please send it to me. And I don't remember you had this. I, I remember the first and the last. I missed uh, the one in the middle, which was. Uh, about the, um, the Earth model, is it, isn't it? Oh yes, yes. Old? The Earth model. Uh, well, um, pay attention. There is uh, uh, the original Earth model is the one which was published, uh, yes, about ten years ago. Uh, but then there was a, a second study which was by De Bayer, and I don't remember the the other author. Uh, but um, there was uh, some work. Uh, projecting uh, what uh, would be uh, the necessary changes to import in the uh, Earth model to account for base station energy consumption in 2020. Uh, this was done uh, shortly after the uh, Earth project. Uh, it was actually done, I believe, within the Green Touch project. 
and we use those numbers. So we are not using uh, the numbers of 10 years ago. Uh, we are using uh, we are using the numbers that were projected for base stations of 2020. Thank you. Daniel. Yeah, Marco, uh, a very speculative uh, question, which uh, in my point of view is not practical at all, but uh, uh, let's suppose that uh, we push really farther this idea that uh, we need to remove all ground uh, energy consumption. And this is the main priority, as Marceau was saying. So one can imagine that uh, you can modulate the traffic as a function of the energy that is available. It means that uh, uh, if we move into mobile edge computing, you will have a fine granularity on the type of traffic you are transmitting and you can say uh, at night at home that you will reduce uh, the bandwidth for whatever for downloading uh, emails or I don't know. Do you think that this is feasible? It makes sense? I think that is very interesting. I think that uh, policies uh, <coughs> which uh, is, are, are essentially resource allocation uh, based not only on uh, uh, user uh, demand uh, available capacity and so on but also on energy uh, mm. uh, this is what i was hinting at uh, in in my reply previously to the question of francois but uh, but i think yes mm -hmm. um, we, we, we should, uh, once once you go to a multi-cell scenario where uh, uh, you have uh, an uneven distribution of capacity and uh, uh, of uh, energy, uh, then uh, you can start uh, uh, making decision about uh, uh, resource assignment based uh, based on uh, whatever capacity you have, but also on whatever energy you have. Mm -hmm. OK, and I have a second one. Uh, we are reading uh, more and more about using the uh, the mobile uh, network infrastructure, the base stations and the antennas, whatever, to do other things that just transmitting data, for example, to transmit the wireless energy and they, uh, for sensing the environment. So this somehow will change the structure of uh, the energy consumption of base stations. I don't know how this, uh, how this, how important this could be. Maybe it's just a, a, a non-practical idea. What is your opinion on this? Yes, I'm reading some of these things where people assume that uh, especially sensors, so small equipment, uh, can uh, can scavenge uh, energy from uh, from uh, uh, the signals emitted by base stations. Uh, that is something we've not yet looked into. Uh, mm -hmm. So I I've just been reading uh, in some papers. You know, every now and then I get yeah. papers to review that uh, discuss these aspects, but. Um, at present, it seems that uh, the energy conversion is still very low, so uh, it's probably practical just for uh, for sensors. Uh, I'm not sure when it will become practical for something bigger, mm. but but I really don't know. That is something yeah. we, we have not been working in. There is a company, the name is White Tricity, like wireless electricity. It mm. seems that they are doing a, a nice job on, a, uh, on these type of technologies. Possibly very interesting. Yeah. Mm. So time for a last question, if any. The audience. I think uh, there is no, no more questions. So thank you again. Uh, Marco, for, for your uh, nice presentation. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks. you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Marco. Thanks.